let's now focus on our net way of uh, controlling and monitoring the units and how to interface the unit to Ardinet platform. Ardinet software allows professional speaker systems to be designed, measured, remotely controlled and managed. Among new features like the new interface, cloud storage and FFT measurement facilities, our new 4 release includes business music support as well. For a complete overview of all Ardinet 4 functionalities, please refer to Ardinet user manual and tutorials on RCF's website. To get started with your DMA amplifiers in Ardinet, download and install the software from the RCF website. As soon as Ardinet will start the first time, username and password have to be inserted. PC needs to be connected to internet during login, otherwise procedure will fail. Once logged in, credentials will no longer be required. From now, the software can be used offline as well. If not registered yet, go to the RCF website and register a new account. Now, according to the network, application and DMA amplifiers to control, let's set up the proper wiring. Option 1. In case of a single DMA82 or DMA162, a standard USB cable can be used to link the integrated USB plug on the DMA rear panel and the USB port on the PC. DMA itself will act as a Ardinet controller. Option 2. When one or more DMA162P extension units are linked to a DMA82 or DMA162 control unit, all amplifiers will require the DMA optional network board installed. Link a Control 2 or a Control 8 controller to the PC and daisy chain all DMA amplifiers to a network port of the controller. In and out plugs are clearly labeled on the optional boards. Now, let's quickly start interacting with the devices using the GO command. It will, in one click, discover for the connected controller, scan for the connected devices, and go online, allowing real-time monitoring and control. Detected devices will be shown in the workspace as icons. In case of direct USB connection to a DMA82 or DMA162 unit, should Ardinet detect more than one serial controller, the GO command won't be available, requiring the user to manually match the specific DMA serial COM port in the Ardinet controller window. In our test application, we have a DMA162 control and a DMA162P extension units, each identified by an icon, showing device logical ID, device model, indication of detected and connected device. Let's double click on DMA162 icon first. Let's explore its properties that are arranged into three main tabs, inputs, outputs, and matrix. The inputs tab allows for input setup and optimization. Inputs are presented as on the DMA162 display in one and two, as line-level RCA connectors, external, a stereo auxiliary input available for future implementations, balanced in, as universal input on screw terminal, and BM, that is the paging console input. Use the gain fader to adjust relevant channel gain. You can simply slide up or down, or enter a specific value in dB. Use the three bands graphic equalizer to shape the sound of your source. Say you want in one to be more uh, music oriented. Let's boost lows and highs and slightly reduce mids. Done. Stereo inputs are normally linked, so each setting is applied to both channels. Use the stereo unlink button to split left and right channels to allow independent settings. This can be useful when, for example, a gain compensation is required on one channel of a stereo source, or when the two channels of an input are fed by independent mono sources. We'll get back on this option discussing of the matrix tab. Additional selections are available for the balanced input. To set the level as line or microphone and toggle Vox facility on, setting relevant level also. Let's move to the outputs tab. Out A and B area presents options for the two power outputs, but applied settings involve bus channels 1 and 2 as well, as mirroring amplified outputs A 
and B. What required? Toggle bridge or stereo modes acting on the relevant buttons. Out B options will be disabled as Out A controls will manage both outputs. In stereo mode, an independent setting of the game to apply balance, for example, is still possible. Disable stereo mode, balance the outputs, enable stereo mode again. Now the Out A fader will act on both, keeping the trim. Let's revert to two separate outputs mono mode. Adjust gain of the output acting on the relevant fader. Optimize then your sound selecting a proper speaker preset and adjusting the factory set cutoff frequency of the high pass filter, where required. Additional buttons are presented to mute the output, toggle bus and answer on or off, invert the polarity, access the parametric equalizer for output processing. Let's quickly correct the room acoustics of our environment. Frequency, gain, Q factor, frequency, gain, Q factor, done. Equalizer can be operated directly on the screen as well. EQ can be saved on the PC or loaded from a stored file. Enable the phase plot display to check out phase shifts. The signal level of each output is shown by the relevant bar. Sub AUX buttons allow to toggle the auxiliary output of the DMA162 amplifier as full range or enable with a low pass filter to drive a subwoofer. The bus area gives the opportunity to act on the bus audio channels sent out from the DMA amplifier on the RJ45 connector. It is possible to adjust bus send level and to either keep processing that has been set on the relevant amplified output or exclude it, the flat option. Let's route sources on the matrix tab now. For example, in one on out A, in two on out B, balanced in to bus channels number three and bus channel number four. Easy. Out A and Out B selections will route sources to amplified outputs A and B and channels 1 and 2 of the bus. Bus 3 and bus 4 will route sources to relevant bus channels of the bus. RDNet accesses the full options of the unit as it was unlocked in advanced mode by front panel. So each stereo input is also available as independent left channel and right channel. To make it simple, where required, a stereo input can be split in two mono inputs. The paging console input can be used for a source as well. These features are interesting to increase the total number of sources to eight. Let's double click on DMA162 pin icon now and let's explore its properties that are arranged in the same layout. First thing first, input tab shows controls according to local pass selection operated in the matrix tab. If the audio feed is set to bus, the unit power outputs will be fed by the four channels coming from the bus, according to the matrix configuration. Therefore, the input tab follows accordingly, allowing to trim or process the bus inputs on this specific DMA162P unit we are operating on. If the local bus selection is set to local instead, the unit outputs will be fed by the local input. Input tab follows accordingly. Stereo Unlink button offers functionality we have already described. Same output options we explore for DMA162 unit are offered for the DMA162P extension amplifier as well in the relevant tab affecting its outputs. Signal level bars, presets, processing, mute, gain, output modes configuration, auxiliary output low pass setting. Let's now route bus channels 3 and 4 to the power outputs of the DMA162P amplifier. This is, for example, the routing configuration of a four zones mono application. Should you prefer to feed the unit with a local source, set the local bus button to on. The local input is available both on the rear and front panel as a stereo input, so can be routed monosum 
or split into two mono sources, as happens on DMA162 and 82 control amplifiers. Once the RDNet configuration is complete, check the lock button if you want hardware controls not to overwrite the RDNet configuration. For any additional information related to business music product settings in RDNet 4, please refer to RDNet user manual available on RCF's website. Thanks for watching.